All right, I'm gonna get started this morning. How is everybody on this rainy day today? Ironically, on the rainy day, I'm gonna talk about door knocking. So it's good. So I'm not actually wasting the morning that you could be door knocking because um, it's raining anyways. Are we gonna pull this one? Oh, okay. That one's like a trick table. We we could we were like, where's Vahisan on Thursday? And Saraf was the only one who could get it open. Oh well, yeah? Because yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of people. We had like three or four tables open, right? Yeah. A lot of people here on Thursday evening. <laughs> but I know none of us could get it though. Um, okay, yeah, so we're going to talk about door knocking this morning. It's a good season to do it. The weather's getting nice. There's a, a good reason to get out. Like I say, you know, I call it uh, exercise and advertise, but it's always good to have that face-to-face -face interaction with people. Um, closing deals requires being face-to-face. -face. Like you're never going to close a deal on the phone. No one's going to say on the phone, okay, yeah, send me the listing of um, paperwork. I'm signing with you. So you've got to get in front of those people. And how do you do that is you've got to get out there, you've got to know your farm area. So I keep on going over and over about our pillars. One of our pillars you should always have is a farm area that you work. So like I say, it doesn't mean that you only take business from there. Obviously you're gonna go and you're gonna take business from anywhere in Ontario, your license is good for it. But where do you go when you're looking, when you're slow for business, when you're looking for business, where do you focus your marketing efforts? It has to be on one focused area, which is going to be your farm area, right? So door knocking is going to be part and parcel of this, okay? Like, um, I'll just go get started here and we'll talk a little bit about that, how we go about door knocking, right? Um, where did I open it on my screen here? All right. So tips to remember while you're door knocking. I guess I should actually start off a little bit by saying you should be doing some research about the area that you're door knocking. So my first tip would definitely be to go into the system and look and see what has recently sold, what's currently up for sale, um, what's been sitting on the market, why it hasn't sold, um, cause you'll get asked those questions by people in the neighborhood, because if you've chosen an area that you don't necessarily live in, maybe you're not seeing it happen every day. They might hit you with a question like, Oh, remember that one that sold three months ago and you don't really know. So you're not going to look very knowledgeable about the area. So do a little research about the area before you go in and uh, you should be watching it anyways. If it's your farm area, you should be going in on a regular basis and seeing what happens. You should know who moved. You should be getting a lot of those listings in that area, but if you're not, and it's new farm area to you. You should be knowing what happened, what happened with the turnover in the neighborhood, right? So when you knock on someone's door, I know it was really difficult during um, COVID. Um, I still did door knocking. Everyone was asking me. I wasn't doing so much just door knocking a whole street, but I was definitely doing strategic door knocks where, you know, like I say, you see somebody with a bin or you see somebody's renovating their roof or they've got a lot of garbage to the curb, little hints that might um, indicate that these people are preparing their house for a sale. So um, the, uh, that was more of the strategic um, door knocks I was doing during COVID. Now things are opening up a little bit. People are a little more lax. They don't mind you knocking on their door as much. Um, so first thing you should remember is you should introduce yourself. Don't go into, are you buying or selling? Um, it might seem like introducing yourself right away doesn't make sense. Um, after all, you could just go into the pitch, but let's consider the situation. You're knocking on someone's door in the middle of the day to ask them if they ever thought about selling their home. You have no real basis for knocking on their door other than the fact that you've studied the neighborhood and know that you could sell their home for a lot of money. First, you want to establish that you're no threat to them even before establishing that you're an expert. Never discount the power of an introduction. It says you're confident and you're not afraid. It'll also put the person who answers the door at ease. So I only ever door knock um, kind of in between this office and my old office, right? So I always say, hey, you know, hi, I'm Christine from Remax, and, you know, our office is right in the area. We buy and sell a lot here. So I start to establish a little bit of rapport with them by letting them know that we're sort of the neighborhood office. Um, this doesn't have to be your spiel if you're door knocking, say, in Brampton. You know, our office isn't close to there, but you'll be coming up with your own script. We're going to go over sort of a skeletal script that you can bounce off of, but you should, you know, edit it to kind of mold for yourself, right? What, what, what works for yourself. So what do you say if the response is bad? So... Yuck, need to grow some thick skin. When you're door knocking, people are going to slam the door on you. 
people are going to say, I'm eating dinner right now. Uh, people are going to say, hey, why are you at my door? Hi. Um, and so what should you say if the response is bad, right? Apologize for disturbing them. And if they give you if they give you a bad response, if you don't apologize, don't be too contrite. You're trying to help them. Make sure to let them know how much they could sell their home for. The thought of making money often calms the most difficult person. So you could say, oh, I'm really sorry. They might say, why are you knocking on my door? Why are you disturbing me? I am in the middle of eating dinner. And I will say, oh, I'm just, I apologize. I was just seeing who wants to buy or sell in this neighborhood because the prices are really good. Did you see your neighbor just sold for 1.4? This is also a little bit why you have to know about the neighborhood and do your research before you go door knocking there, right? What are the four most important things to consider with cold open strips? So what's a cold open script? A cold open script is you don't know if the person wants to buy or sell, right? So if you're knocking on a FISBO's door or somebody with a terminated or expired listing, I wouldn't consider it a cold opener. But if you're just knocking on fresh on someone's door and you don't know and you're just cold knocking the neighborhood, um, you have no idea if this person has any intention of selling. So what should you do? You should be sincere. All effective forms of communication start with sincerity right? Don't assume. You might be right 90% of the time with your assumptions, but 10% of the time that you're wrong, it'll blow your chance of representing the home seller. Have a follow-up uh, if the decision maker doesn't open the door. So very often I get to the door and I say, hey, you know, are you thinking of selling? And, you know, you might get a, a wife there, for instance, I've had this happen where they say, oh yeah, well maybe it depends what the price is. And then you kind of go back at a later date and maybe the husband answers the door and they go, I have no idea what you're talking about. We were, we're never thinking of selling, right? So maybe one sort of thinking, yeah, I wanna see what the price is, what this agent says, but hasn't relayed that to their spouse. Or very often you knock on a door and you get a tenant uh, if you're door knocking a lot. Uh, I say the tenant or a child, like a minor, um, and I often say, oh, well, do you want to give me your landlord or your parents' phone number that I can call the homeowner directly? You want to definitely be de dealing with the homeowner. You don't want to be wasting your spiel at the door for the tenant. It's not going to do you any good at the end of the day, and they're not going to relay that information. I normally end up leaving two cards if I have. I'll say, can you give one to your landlord? And if you ever need anything, you need another rental property or you want to purchase in the future, here's my card as well, right? Uh, consider a softer sell in the initial door knocking, knocking script. So don't be overly aggressive with your initial script. Even if the decision maker answers the door, you must be delicate. You're knocking on the door during the day. Be aware of that. How aggressive should I get? So aggressiveness depends on targeted home. If you know the homeowners, even just through someone else, maybe the agent who works in your firm that sold the home down the street, being somewhat aggressive shouldn't hurt your chances at signing them as a client. So if you're docking in the area and it's your farm area and you know a lot of people and say somebody from our office or even yourself has just recently sold a home, you can be a little more aggressive and say, hey, look, you know, you, I know you were thinking and now's the time. Because if you were on the fence about it, you should really decide now because your neighbor at 66 just sold for 1.4 and it's a great time to sell right? Uh, I know we've been saying this to our clients leading up to all these rate hikes. I, it was a big push at the beginning of the year because they were going to sit, they were saying there was going to be three to five rate hikes. And we were all pushing our sellers saying this thing. We were being a little more aggressive with our scripts, not even just our, our clients, but people that I was door knocking, people that I might meet on the street that were passively thinking of selling. It's, it's the, that's the time you might get a little more aggressive when you know something that might affect their, their decision right? You say those rate hikes are coming. It's going to affect the market. It's going to calm it. You want to cash out now. Let's list this property sooner than later, right? And I have these clients who didn't listen because I, I'm, about, I'm about to list a townhouse shortly. And he's freaking out that three months ago, he could have got 150,000 more because that's just the way the sales have been going in his complex now, right? And I said, well, I told you to call me in February, right? But it's just time and place whenever they're ready to get to put the property up for sale. So, what are some of the follow-up things to say if the decision maker doesn't answer the door? So you always ask for the decision maker, you always, and you don't say, are you the decision maker? Because maybe it's the wife and she'll say, yep, not thinking that the husband, you know, is also entitled. So I don't usually ask who the decision maker is. I tend to ask, who is the owner of the property? Are you the owner of the property? Are you the only owner of the property? And try to book a time when both people are present to talk to them about it. Um, if someone who answers the door isn't the decision, isn't the decision maker, 
ask the person if they'll forward your information. I think this is completely wrong, this article. I never ask if they'll forward the information. That's not my first option. Because when you do that, generally you find people don't call you back. So even if um, not just door knocking, make it a hard practice in your real estate career. If you're talking to a colleague at work or you're talking to a cousin or a friend and they say, I know someone that's selling, don't say, hey, give them my info. 90% of the time that call will never come back to you. Always try to gather that person's information. So before I try to get the, the tenant who just answered or the minor that just answered to pass on my information, I say, hey, can I have your parents' number? Or can I have your landlord's number? Can I have their contact information? So just like the actual scripts, the answers to the questions we lay out is just advice. Real estate agents should try and develop their own style of door knocking, their own strategies. Also make sure to experiment with different scripts. You never know what the work, what will work. And don't forget half the battle is your comfortability. Use scripts you're comfortable using. So like I say, scripts are just something, we're gonna go over a script for door knocking today. Scripts are just a guideline, but then you have to, you have to uh, mold them into what your flair is, what you, what you usually say on a regular basis, how you work, right? And the key is, is that the more you're door knocking in a neighborhood and the more you're farming that neighborhood, it becomes a real comfortable area that you're in because a lot of the neighbors you're going to get to know. So now your door knocks aren't just going to be really cold. They'll be like, oh, hi, John, you know, I was knocking on your door because I wanted to know, did you see that, you know, 66 sold recently? Or, hey, Mary, I see that you're doing your roof. That's great. What were you thinking of selling in the near future? What do you, what are we, some people might just say, oh, no, I'm just fixing up the house. But um, very often they'll say, oh, yeah, no, I was kind of thinking of fixing it up and testing the market, right? So if you're that familiar place, that familiar person, sorry, that's always door knocking in that neighborhood, you'll get to know neighbors like that. Uh, I actually had one person, just a, a side note, like I keep on saying, set up your prospects and because they work. I have my little like farm area that I door knock in and I sort of know a lot of good chunk of the neighbors. Um, one of them just emailed me this morning and she says, you know, I know I'm looking in this pocket for a while, but I think it's a little too expensive. Take me a little north of here and switch my search up. Right. So hopefully, you know, over time, you're going to get that residual business. I keep on um, talking about keeping the ball rolling, ball rolling for your business. That's a good way to do it, to keep in touch with these people, right? The bottom line is that door knocking works. It does. Trust me. I was just talking to a couple of agents from our office and I was really pushing them. I said, please go door knocking. I go every day. We're talking about, oh, there's no business. There's no business. I said, it is kind of slow right now. I said, but this is where you can't just rely on your referral and your repeat business um, or maybe necessarily just any natural business you might've got coming towards you. You have to work towards it. I said, just go out a little bit and door knock. And they literally spent, I think, two days door knocking an hour each day. And I believe they're pulling a listing in now knock on wood. So I'm telling you, it's a highly effective tool. It really works. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully you guys can hear me online there. Um, I don't know whether the weather is affecting it, but let me know if you guys uh, lose connection with me at all. Uh, you just shoot, shoot me a text or something. Um, yeah, so door knocking is definitely a highly effective tool. I, I guarantee you it will work. I, For my business, my door knocking and my just listed, just sold postcards are the things that pull me the most business. And in that farming pocket, right? So if I've just listed or just sold, I'm going to send out of that neighborhood. If I drive around that neighborhood, maybe I take a little break and I go eat my lunch and we drive around that neighborhood. And I notice that, you know, John is got a bin in his driveway. I'm going to go knock and talk to John today because I feel like getting out of the car a little bit and talking. But door knocking definitely works. Yes. Sometimes they have friends or family. That's okay. You don't have to worry about any of that. Everybody knows a realtor. Everybody knows a realtor. So you have to show them your worth. Is their family or friend member always coming around, always telling them about the sales in the neighborhood? Sometimes when you show them a little worth, they think twice, definitely, because they say, oh, you know, my cousin, yeah, he works full time and he doesn't really, he does this part time. And even though he has a real estate license, you know, um, uh, Salva Kumar keeps on coming around and giving me information and he seems really knowledgeable and I have confidence in him, right? Especially when you say to them, hey, you know, I know you've got a friend, friend or family in the business, but don't you want a second opinion? Like you're not doing them a, 
don't do them a favor, do yourself a favor and get a second opinion. And like when they see that you're working hard, they might have more confidence in your work, right? So it doesn't matter. I've used tons of people who know people who were um, in the business, who know other uh, agents through other people. Everybody knows an agent, put it that way. There's so many agents everywhere. So you hear it all the time. You can't worry about it. You just have to keep on, on trudging forward and you'd be surprised how many times when you just pass that barrier and try a little bit that you, you're the one that gets the listing over someone else, right? And the more you do it, the more confidence it gives you to try it again, right? So like very often I've been in situations, I had this listing on Bermorton where I really thought I wasn't going to get the listing because, you know, just the, he had another CMA sitting there from another agent, or um, I actually knew one guy whose daughter was an agent, but she only did it part-time. He ended up using me over its daughter. So you'd be surprised, definitely, right? Um, so selling a home requires a personal touch. There's nothing more personal than door knocking, right? It says, I'm not the type of real estate agent who wants your business just because I've got a cool flyer. So I always tell my, my clients and everything when I'm door knocking and I'm out and about and you're greeting people, I say, look, I'm a really active agent. Look at me. I'm out here right now, right? I'm not just going to throw your listing up on MLS and let it sit. I'm going to be really active. I'm more like more when I get your listing, I'm gonna come back and door knock this neighborhood again, or I'm gonna cold call this neighborhood to let them know that uh, your house is up for sale because I really wanna push this listing. And the more I push it, the better price you're gonna get for it, right? And I truly believe in six degrees of separation. So it doesn't hurt you to do that for your listing. You're not just saying, oh my God, I got the, all this extra work to do for my listing right now. Um, I believe in six degrees of separation, right? So meaning, um, there's someone in the neighborhood knows somebody that wants to move in, or they have an older child who just got married that wants to purchase in the neighborhood. You're helping push your own listing and you're, you're, you're increasing the likelihood of you double ending the deal as well, right? So it doesn't hurt to say to your clients, oh, I'm going to go do this work because it's not extra work for you. It's going to help you as well in the long run. And maybe even if they don't want to purchase your listing in the neighborhood, if you do just listed door knocks, um, maybe you're going to find another listing along the way right? My popular guy in my area just put up another sign this morning. Now I never door knock my neighborhood, even though I've lived there my whole life, because I know all the neighbors and I don't really like to door knock there. But um, I saw he just put another one up. He's really consistent. And I see him out there door knocking all the time, all the time, all the time. I'll leave the office. I'll go home about to eat my dinner. And he's out there door knocking my neighborhood. He's consistent and his sign goes up on the regular. So it definitely is a strategy that works. You guys have to consider adding to your, to your um, daily work regimen, right? So let's see what some door knocking scripts look like. So I think this is the one, this is the one that I created. Um, when people were saying to me so many times, what do you say when you go to the door? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. So like I say, first thing I make sure I'm armed with what's going on. So I'd say, hold, like I, if I was door knocking my neighborhood, I'd say, oh my God, did you see number? I don't know what number it is on my street. 78 is coming soon. That's great, eh? What do you think it's going to go up for? I think the market's a little slow because 36 has been sitting for a little bit. Their price is a little high. But did you see that 85 just sold? Like you want to be able to talk like this intel intelligently about the neighborhood right? So they, they feel like you know, right? So I say, hi, my name is Christine with Remax Ace Realty. You probably know our office. We're located close by at Kennedy and Ellesmere. I'm not sure if you noticed, but we have many sold homes in your area. We're working with lots of buyers who were unable to purchase those homes and are still looking in your neighborhood. Are you looking to sell in the near future? So you're using the, I've got a buyer, right? And it's not necessarily for your listing. I have um, new agents that come to me and say, but I haven't sold anything, right? You have to use the strength of your brokerage. I keep on reminding everybody, there's 130 agents out of this brokerage. What you need to do is look and see what we've done in the neighborhood. You don't need to ask permission to advertise those listings, right? And you can use the almighty we. So if Chaudhry's just sold and you're door knocking, you can sit there and you can say, hey, do you see we just sold this one down the street, even though it's his listing, right? Because it's from your brokerage. So you're allowed to use it to advertise. So if, no, there's no charge. So the only reason I say that we're allowed to is if you go outside of our brokerage, like say you pick a, an area to door knock that your, your farm area that this office doesn't work a lot in, which is not going to be very likely. There should be something recently sold. There's a lot of agents in this office, but just say you pick an area where we haven't sold anything in years, right? 
you can look and see what other agents have sold in the area but then if you want to hand out a flyer or you know email your clients about it you have to ask that agent permission to advertise right but because we are all under the same umbrella of one brokerage we can use each other's listings that way we don't have to ask each other to, to advertise we're under the same umbrella i mean you might have a courtesy if you're putting up a big ad or doing a big campaign say hey buddy i'm going to advertise your listing I'm, but you don't have to you don't have to and especially not for door knocking you can say we we it, it is we it's your brokerage you're part of this brokerage right so um definitely use it to your power if you haven't you don't have a lot of track record selling to build up that clout in the neighborhood right so are you looking to sell in the near future? If they say maybe or yes, you say, great. When would you be looking to move? So we're sensing their motivation right now. So now I want to know, are they just saying this to me at the door because they want to test the market or do they have motivation? So if they say something to me like, oh, I just got a job transfer. I need, I need to be there by December. I know here I've got a warm lead. They have to move, right? Or if they say, I don't know, I've been seeing the prices and I thought, well, maybe if I can get that price, still they would like to try, and uh, but only if it, that price is achievable, right? So you, you're sensing their motivation, right? Where are you moving to? So you're sensing what you're going to get. So this is also help you with your pricing strategy, your commission strategy with them. Where are you moving to is the next question. Oh, that's great. Where are you moving to? Oh, you know, um, I am breaking up with my wife and I'm going to get a rental in, in Oshawa, Okay. So, you're, okay, you, there's some motivation there. They're going to get a rental after. It's no problem. You're still going to get some business from it. Or, oh, I'm just cashing out of my investment. Investment. I'm not planning on buying anything now. You know what I mean? I'm going to move in, I don't know, with my mom. Or, oh, yeah, actually, you know, we just had a baby and we want to upgrade. We want to buy a bigger house. So you're, you're sensing what business you're going to get from this in the future, right? And then what types of your houses are you looking for? You should usually talk to them about their wants and, and must-haves to sort of see, is this something I'm going to be able to get for them? To judge whether you're buying or selling first. This is like the very age-old question your clients are going to ask you 100 times a day. Should I buy or should I sell first, right? Um, and it sort of doesn't matter really in the long run. I like to sell first because I like to know what sort of budget you're working with, what sort of money you ended up with, what sort of closing date. When you purchase first, sort of the, the pressure is on there a little bit that I have to match up closing dates and what if they don't get the money out of the property, especially now in a falling market. But sometimes it's necessary. Like sometimes people are looking for a very specific thing. Like if they say to me, oh, what type of house am I looking for? Well, I really, really need something. Um, I had an older lady, I keep on going back to her, um, who was looking for a bungalow at like the Port Union and Lawrence area in the newer pocket though, because she wanted to be close to her sister. The inventory for bungalows there is like next to none, like five in every little pocket in the neighborhood, right? So every time one came up, it was like gold to try and find her a bungalow, right? So in that case, we purchased before we sold, right? So if they say no, you say, okay, would you like an updated evaluation of your property? So now I want to, I made the effort to get out there. And people think that no is a bad thing. You have to turn these no's into yeses one day. Right. So we talked a little bit about nurturing our leads and bringing our leads through the process. Right. I've made the effort to walk in this neighborhood. I've knocked on the store. I've now met you. I've gone through all the hard part, the butterflies in my stomach and breaking through the, you know, the, the barrier. And now I've talked to you. I know your name. I know where you live. I know you don't want to move, but I might be talking a little to you about your family. Oh, you just had a grandchild. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. I know you enough that if I see you again, I can say hi to you comfortably. It's no longer a cold um introduction right so you're going to still take down notes take good notes of everybody in your farm area and you're going to say to yourself okay okay it's a no but would you like an updated evaluation of your property okay great so is somebody typing a bad connection yeah it keeps on saying bad connection that's why i was saying they can text me it says um an unstable internet connection or something every now and then it's flashing on me a little bit okay. yeah sorry guys that's why i was saying you guys can text me if you're getting a bad connection but it just, I don't know, something about the internet keeps on popping up every now and then. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Where's my chat going? There we go. Can I hear you? We cannot hear you. I don't know, is it the weather or something today?
Can you guys hear me? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Every now and then it keeps on twice. It's done an hour where it says unstable internet connection. I don't know if, if it's the weather or what outside. Um, but it usually doesn't do that. So I'm assuming it has something to do with a bit the weather today. But all right. If you cut out again, you guys can just just uh, shout at me because <laughs> if I'm chatting, I'm not necessarily looking at the screen there. Um, yeah, so I was saying you have to nurture these leaves. You've taken that time to go to the door. Can now see. OK, good. You guys can see us. OK, so um, you've taken the time to go to that door. You've taken all that time and energy. You've now made a connection. You've got now what I consider a cold client. Just because they don't want to sell it doesn't mean they're not going to be your client eventually one day. They might need some service. So what are you going to do? You would like an updated valuation of your property. Ah, uh, sure. Keep me posted about what happens in the neighborhood. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to use my prospect search. See, it's saying it again. Your internet connection is unstable. So I don't know if you guys can hear me there. It just flashed it at me again. I'm not sure why. We did internet booster or something. <laughs> like I say, it normally doesn't do that while I'm training. So I think it probably is the weather today. Um, yeah, aside from that, what are other things you can do to offer them value, right? So you can say, I'm going to send you updated evaluation of what's happening, which means anything that comes up in their neighborhood, I'm going to set them up to um, keep them updated about it. I'm going to say, okay, did you, after I talk to them, I'm going to say, oh, did you see that one at 66 that sold for, you know, 1.6? That was over what I thought it was going to go for. I thought the market had fallen, but it went for a decent price. Um if not, you're going to keep in contact with them. You might go into your CRM that we were talking about on Thursday, and we might set them up in there for some e-blasts or some campaigns to keep them up to date. Maybe I'll sign them up for the quarterly, quarterly newsletter that reminds them, you know, clean your eaves in the spring. You know what I mean? How to winterize your property. Um, different uh, seasonal emails. Um, maybe I'll remind them, hey, you know, do you have any referral business for me? Right. Maybe not necessarily. Maybe they live in that property the next 15 years, but they refer you. Oh, you know, the neighbor across the street is moving or my cousin really wants to move. I'll give you her number. How about that? Right. So you're going to look and pull business from these people. Your, your object is to increase your center of influence. Right. And work off of them and nurture those. So when a door knock is a no, it's not a bad thing. It's not a walk and go on and oh, I knocked on 10 doors and it says no. they all said no. No, it's 10 people you're meeting in a day. So I had this discussion with my best friend recently, and, I, and she put it in a good perspective. She said, you know, isn't it funny how when you're in elementary school and you're in high school and university, it, your social circle feels so big. And that why? Because you're in a pool of people and you're meeting different people all day long and you're chatting with classmates and you have this nice big social circle. And as you grow older, I shouldn't say older, but as we become adults and we come, our social circle gets, gets a lot smaller. And not only that, for real estate agents, it's even harder for us because what's our social circle? We come to the office, we're all agents. Well, obviously, I'm not going to list with you because you could list for yourself, right? So we have this small social circle to work with. So what you have to become an expert is, is expanding that. So that's why I say you knock on 10 doors. It's not 10 no's. It's 10 people you just introduced yourself to, right? So you have to think about that. Now I've got 10 people to add to my social, not necessarily my social circle, but my center of influence, like we say. And we're going to keep on growing and growing and growing it every day with every bit of business. You have to be really good at capturing those leads. So whether you're door knocking or whether you're handing out 10 business cards a day and talking to people, you have to be able to retain that and start building off of that right? Building all that business. So again, here they say, do you have any family, friends, or neighbors who are thinking of selling our home or looking to purchase in the near future? The best kind of neighbor to knock on the door, and I love it, is the old gossipy one because she knows everything about everybody in the neighborhood. Or he, I've had a he, right? So we, I've knocked on doors where they say, oh, well, you know, they just had a baby and I think they're renovating or I think they're having trouble or something, right? So you get a little bit of knowledge before you go and knock on these doors, right? And then again, never forget to thank them for their time. Say thank you so much for your time. If you ever have any questions about your home or neighborhood, don't hesitate to contact me. I also forgot to mention too, for a warm opening, I always look for something to compliment, something genuine so I don't sound fake about it. But I, um, I'm a, 
I'm not a great gardener, but I know a lot about flowers and stuff. So normally I'll say, oh my God, I love your azaleas or your hostas are looking really good this summer, right? Or what beautiful roses you have. So I tend to like really appreciate those things. Maybe you appreciate something different. Like if they take you for a walk through their house and they have a big screen TV and you're a techie, you might go, oh, wow, that was that 60 inch or 70, whatever it is. Start a conversation with them and find something on a common ground to compliment their house, right? Because it also yeah, it kind of bring, makes you uh, a little closer to them and, and softens the fact that you guys are strangers talking, right? So it kind of um, brings a little sincerity to your conversation, like I said. Do you guys have any questions so far? How are you guys doing there online? Have I been pretty consistent? Can you hear me? I know bad connections to Neymala. I'm sorry. Like I say, usually with training, it's fine, but I guess it's, I think it's just the weather, the raininess or the clouds or something today. The internet keeps on um, telling me bad connection, bad connection. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad it's better now. Have any of you guys tried any door knocking? Anybody online there? I know for a fact with door knocking and cold calling, when I work with a lot of new agents, the biggest thing is the nerves to get over. But I keep on telling you guys, it's a super exciting feeling when it works, especially like I say, I sent those two agents out. I actually went door knocking with them for about 10 minutes the first day because they said, oh, I'm so nervous. Just show me what you do at the door. And we knocked on about 10 doors and then they went off the next two days. And I believe we're signing a listing now. So I'm telling you it works, right? You have to think, they say out of every hundred people you talk to, out of every hundred people you cold call, every hundred doors you knock on, you're only going to get one good like lead out of that, right? So every time you get a no or a door slam in your face, you have to say, that's okay. I'm one, I'm one closer. You can't look at it as a bad thing. I'm one closer and take something good from that experience. Like I say, capture that information, information, keep in touch with that person. Unless they're really like, get away from my door, never talk to me, never knock on my door again. Then make sure you put it in your notes. Don't knock on this person's door because that's the worst thing you want to do is get a bad impression, right? But you, you'll find even those people who are, end up nasty at the beginning, because some people just aren't good with strangers, right? Um, some people that are nasty in the beginning, once they see you walking a lot in the neighborhood, Hopefully they see your sign go up on a couple of sales. They'll warm up to you eventually over time. And if you, even if you don't want to knock on the door, sorry, if you see them on the grass mowing the lawn, you might say hi to them, right? If you're door knocking in that neighborhood. Sorry, what do you want to say? We don't need to go back. We know the way they talk. So yeah. You know, we understand all these people that are like, you don't want to go back. Exactly. Don't invade their space, yeah. you know? Some people just aren't good with that. They don't want people knocking on the doors and they're grumpy about it and that's fine. There's other ways to warm up to them. You're gonna be sending flyers out in your farm area anyway. So they'll see you in their mailbox. Um, they'll see you knocking and walking along their street, hopefully if you're religiously door knocking your neighborhood. And they'll, like I say, if you catch them outside, say hi to them, right? You're not invading their space by saying hi as you're passing by. Just be friendly. Don't think, oh, that's that nasty person and I'm not gonna to talk to them, right? <laughs> It's a great way. I have lots of agents tell me, and I am totally guilty of doing it too, is I've taken my kids out walking and they're handing the flyers and all the mailboxes for me, right? You know, like we're out walking as a family and they're just putting them on the mailboxes. I did door hangers one year actually, and the kids really thought it was fun to hang them. So I'd let them run up the driveway and put my door hangers on, right? Door hangers are a great thing. I, I got to say, I'm a big fan of them. Like I say, usually for, I don't keep any secrets for doing business because there's tons of business out there. Door hangers are great. And you know why? If you hand somebody a flyer and you put it in their mailbox, they're not even going to really look at it and they're going to throw it in the garbage, right? But for door hangers, they physically have to take it off the door and go, what's this? Yeah. Right? And you're separate from their mailbox. So I know they're a little more expensive, but I think they have more value to them. So I tend to do door hangers because I like to have that to stick on their handle if they don't answer the door right? And then they come and they pick it up and they take a good look at it. So I don't know, just something to think about. But like I say, some things work for some people and some don't. So some people tell me I hand out flyers all the time and uh, I hate it. I never get any calls, right? It's true. If you just hand, if you just, if, even if I sent out 50,000 flyers today, it's not going to be as powerful as sending out a thousand flyers in the same neighborhood for eight consecutive weeks, right? You understand? It's not the quantity, it's the quality of what you're doing. So that's why I say you've got to pick this little area and trust me, you're going to say, well, how much business am I going to get from that? You're still working business. You're still calling your center of influence, calling your family, calling your friends. And everybody's going to say, oh, you know, I have a listing in Mississauga. I have a listing in Curtis. I have a listing in Markham. Great. You're going to take all that business. 
but where you're pulling business from cold call strangers is your your farming pocket so you're going to send out your your aver advertising for instance you haven't just sold or just listed anything but you could look and see if the office has put that on your flyer you know say something savvy or something you know some kind of marketing thing that you want to put on your flyer send it out and do an eight week campaign change it up a little bit each week and send it out eight weeks in a row or once every two weeks whatever your budget is and just pick four or five hundred homes in that pocket and send it out send it out consistently and then when you go and door knock in that neighborhood they already seen you they say that you have to see your flyer i think eight or ten times before they recognize your face right so just go and do that send it out four or five times door knock that area and then you're going to start getting calls from your advertising because now you're not just a flyer in the mailbox now people go oh i know this guy yeah i just talked to him yesterday he was the one that knocked on our door right and you'll get to know that neighborhood well like i say that the agent who door knocks our neighborhood he never knocks on my parents door because he knows my dad was an agent the whole life he never knocks on my door he never knocks on my brother's door he knows the neighborhood very well to know where all the agents are and it's useless for him to come knock on our doors right so you have to get to know it very intimately and get to know everything about everything that's happening in that neighborhood and keep on top of it right and then you'll find that this miracle happens where people start calling you for business which is something that's not going to happen unless you actively put in this time and effort right how's everybody doing online there Like I say, have you guys tried any door knocking or any cold calling? You guys have to pick an area that has good turnover too. So like I say, everybody has big dreams and I would love to sell $3.4 million homes all day long. That'd be my only inventory. But the thing is, is that the turnover on that is not as fast, right? They're on the market longer because not every buyer is qualified for that sort of property. Um, and that, those neighborhoods are don't have as much turnover, basically. So if you're selling a regular product like Scarborough, Bungalow, or you know, two-story Whitby, right? Those things are regular turnover in those neighborhoods. You constantly see at least a couple of homes for sale in the neighborhood at any given time, right? So pick your farming neighborhood, your um, farming area wisely. You want to pick something that's easy for you to go to on a regular basis, because um, it should be something that's that's convenient for you. So if you live in Whitby and you pick a farming area in Mississauga. You can't complain that you're not door knocking consistently enough because it's too long to drive out there all the time, right? So think about it. Think, do I like, like I say, I never door knock my neighborhood and I can't explain to you why everybody bugs me about it. They're like, why? Right. And I have sold things in my neighborhood for neighbors that know me, but I just don't actively try and pull business from there. I don't know. I just, it's my comfort level. That's where my kids go to school. I work, I, you know, I get out and I walk all the time. I don't want to be the person that's walking in the neighborhood and sort of everybody's avoiding thinking that I'm going to bug them to sell their house. Right. So I just generally never, ever do it. So, but my farming area, I, like I say, is, is still convenient to me, something I can go to easily every day, go and knock it and talk to people in it all the time. So yeah, definitely pick something that's convenient for you. Do you guys have any questions? You guys are going to enjoy the rest of this rainy day. Maybe no door knocking today because it's been rainy outside, right? Not the best day, but like I say, it's a good day to prepare for it. Maybe today you sit and you do some cold calls. And when you go to get gas, you remember to hand out your business card. And if you go and get your hair cut, or if you go to pick your kids up from school, you're going to focus on handing out as many business cards as you can today, right? I hope everybody is doing very well this week. Like I say, I'm going to try and do an in-person session again on Thursday. Um, I haven't decided what the topic is yet. It's been a busy week with a long weekend, but it'll probably be something hands-on that we can go in. Maybe we'll learn how to do our CMAs and create our CMA on Thursday. That might be a good one to do in person. Um, I know the girls actually were talking on Thursday about doing the scripts and dialogues too, and trying to, that's a fun, fun one. Role playing, right? When we used to do that at the other office, it's good because it gets rid of those nerves. Like I say, if you give each other a hard time in person, um, when you get somebody on the phone who's giving you a hard time, you don't get tripped up and nervous what to say because you know you've already been through it back and forth live, um, sort of role playing in the office. So maybe we'll do that. This maybe that'll be a fun Thursday. We'll do that, and then the next week we'll work on our C um, our CMAs. So, all right, everyone, you all have a lovely week. 
hopefully there's more sun to come. And let me know if you guys have any questions and we'll be in touch. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.